All right, so I'm outside of a 2019 Honda Civic hatchback. This is the Sport Touring model. So I'll start to the back of the car just because the hatchback is kind of what differentiates it from other models uh, as far as in the Civic world. So the first thing I want to show you is the key. So the key to this car is right here. So you'll notice that I do have a key fob, so it is keyless entry, and I do have push-button start. I also have remote start. To use that, I would always press the lock button first, and then I would press and hold the remote start button uh, for a couple seconds after that, and then that would crank the car up. So you can see the car just kicked on. Uh, it'll run for 10 minutes. If I press it again, it'll run for another 10. If I wanted to turn it off, I could press the unlock button and then the remote start button, and that'll turn the car off. So you can see how that works. So let's check out the back side of the car here. So I'm going to pop open the hatch for you, and this way you can check some things out. First thing you'll notice, I do have the uh, carpeted floor mats that come standard with the vehicle. Uh, I will point out a point, a couple things. Up above me, you'll see it does have the privacy cover right here, and then you do have one that pulls across right here. Uh, so I can protect and keep things hidden so that nobody sees anything that's going on. And if I don't need it, I can let it fold back away. Now, down below the floorboard here, you will notice that I do have my spare and all my accessories. So I've got my jack and all that stuff. So full diameter spare, so full height, just not full width, right? Now your back seats do fold down, and I'll point it out, you've got some spots right here where you can flip them down from, uh, and it is a 60-40 split, so you can see what's going on from that standpoint. So let's walk around to the side of the car, and we'll pop it open and we'll show you. Now this interior is going to be the black and ivory mixed interior, so that way you can see what's going on from here. Uh, and then we'll fold down some seats here, but let me move this front seat a little bit because i got a feeling it's going to get in the way. Um, so I'm going to slide this one up here. Uh, while I'm over here, I will point out it is a powered seat on your passenger and driver's side in this vehicle. So let's move back over here and do this again. All right, so we got one seat down, and I'll walk around the other side, and actually I can do it from right here, but... All right, so this way you can get an idea for what the spacing is inside of the car. So I've got a good amount of space to work from here. Uh, if camping went awry, I could sleep in this car if I needed to. I'd probably just have to do it diagonally because I'm six foot and some change. Uh, so that's what's going on from that standpoint. Now, as far as hopping in the back seat, I can sit comfortably behind somebody my size. So you have space uh, that you can use. I mean, it's not going to be as huge as in a quarter or a pile or some of my bigger cars, but you do have the space to work from. Uh, the back of my vehicle does have heated seats. You'll notice that they are right there. That is part of the touring model. Uh, you'll notice I do have tweeters in the doors. Uh, then I'm going to have tweeters in the fronts. Since I got this front door open, I'll show you here. Uh, and the car does have a sub, so it has a higher powered stereo system uh, than what you would find in some of the lower trim levels. So let's throw this stuff in there. Now, walking up, well, I'll shoot you down the side here real quick, too, and show you. Uh, you do have a smoked-out black wheel uh, that you'll see on there, along with my grill, and then I do have a body kit that runs along the bottom, so you can see that, too. And then starting up at the front of the car, I've got a black grill, LED lights, uh, and all that, so it's a good-looking car from that standpoint. So, on the door, it is keyless entry, as I mentioned, so I can just put my hand on the door handle to unlock. When I get out of the car, I can just press the black button. It's now locked. So, unlocked, locked. Once I hop in the car, let's get it cranked up and we'll show you some things. All right, so I'll point you down there so you can see it. I've got some aluminum uh, sport pedals. Uh, put my foot on the brake, press my start button, it'll get me cranked up and running here. Now, I'm gonna start you on the left side and we'll just kind of work our way across the dash. I've got my auto up down uh, window controls, and then I've got my window locks, my door locks, and then my mirror controls so you can see I can toggle left and right and then adjust on the pad. Now moving up to the dash. First thing you'll see right here is collision mitigation braking. Uh, so that's always on unless you turn it off. The way that works is if you um, are coming up on another car, it's looking like you're going to rear end them. If first it'll alert you and then tell you, hey, you're about to rear end a car. If you don't apply the brakes, then it'll start to apply the brakes for you. So that's how that function works. And that's this top button right here. Below that is road departure mitigation. So you can see it's on right now because the LED is on. This one has an LED. These other two don't, but they're always on unless you press and hold to turn them off. And to give you an idea, that's how long you have to press it to turn on and off. So it's not gonna be one of those things you accidentally bump and, and turn off, right? So road departure mitigation. How that works is, uh, if the, in the event that you drive off the shoulder of the road, what it will do is it'll actually transfer power uh, to whichever, or excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. This one, if you tr if you drive off the side of the road, uh, it'll give the steering wheel a, a vibrate and then it will give you an audible alert to let you know, hey, you're driving off the side of the road, please wake up, pay attention, maybe you're drowsy or something of that nature. Now, the one, Above and over to the right here is what I was about to get at, and that's vehicle stability assist. This one is set up to where if you go into a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction to help correct that skid. Uh, and that's always on and running. The only time you'd want to take that off is maybe if you were stuck in the mud and wanted to spin your tires while somebody's trying to push you out or something of that nature. So that's what's going on from there. 
As I mentioned earlier, you can see that I do have tweeters right there. Uh, so let's move across and onto the steering wheel. So on the left side of the steering wheel, the first thing I'll point out is your Bluetooth control. So to answer a call, to hang up or go back, and then my voice command button. Above that, you'll see this I button right here, and that's going to actually control the menu screen that you see up here. Uh, so let me see if I can get this a little bit deeper in there so you can see all these different screens that are going to pop up. So you can see that I've got... Uh, my uh, tripometer information. Uh, I can check out as far as like my drivetrain and how that's working. Uh, I can look at my next turn by turn if I have the navigation navigation going, um, or it'll just give me a general compass if I don't have navigation up and running, which my navigation system is set up through Garmin, which I'll go over here in just a second. Uh, I can jump over to oil life. Uh, so when it gets down to 15%, it'll actually shoot you an alert and let you know. And then you'll see an A1 or a B1 or an A2 or B2. And you can look in your quick start guide uh, and it, it'll tell you exactly what the dealership's going to recommend to you. So that way, if you're worried about going in and then trying to sell you extra stuff, because I know that's some concern for some people, you'll know what they're going to offer you. Uh, audio wise, so currently my audio is turned off. I'll kick it on just so you can see how this works. And now you can see that AM is running. Now, I can toggle between AM, FM, anything I have hooked up, Sirius XM, if I had Bluetooth and all that, and all I'm doing to do so is pressing up and down on these buttons, and that will toggle through. So you can see when I press up, you can see stuff start to move over there. So that's how that works. Um, so I'll keep going with that menu. You can see I can jump over to Bluetooth controls, or I can switch to kilometers an hour if I want. Um, so that's what's going on from the screen, and that's using the I button right here. So I can either press it once and then toggle through this way, or just keep pressing it, and it'll toggle from next menu to next menu to next menu. Um, jumping left and right, if I have my audio running, it'll just allow me to toggle through my favorite station. So when I press it, you'll see that screen pop up, and it'll actually see it move over here. So you can see it jump to three now, jump to four now, and so forth, right? So that's just what's going on from this standpoint. If I was listening to Bluetooth or Spotify or anything like that, it would just jump to the next track. So that's how that works. Moving over to the right side of the steering wheel. So, the first button I want to talk about is the main button. If the main button is on, uh, which if I turn this on and I get out of the car, turn it off, get back in, it'll remain on unless I hit it again to turn it off. So, you can leave this on. So, right now I hopped in this car. I haven't turned this on yet, and you can see that it's actually on because you can see ACC and LKAS. That's what's right over here. ACC stands for Adaptive Cruise Control. Uh, LKAS stands for Lane Keep Assist. So, Lane Keep Assist is this button right here. So, when I turn this button on, you're going to see some dotted lines appear, though. So, that's what's flashing up there right now. And when I'm going over 45 miles an hour, those are going to fill in solid, assuming it can read the road that I'm on. From there, if I start to drift out of my lane, it'll actually correct and move the steering wheel for me and correct. Uh, it, it's super subtle. It just feels like the car has a slight pull to it, but it's just there to make sure you don't... Uh, you know, end up end up getting distracted and bumping into the car next to you. Now, the second one is the adaptive cruise control. So, when I get up to the speed I want to set, I would press the set button, which it's going to tell me I can't right now because I don't have my seatbelt on. But once I've set the speed, I can then press this button right here, uh, and, and it will create distance between me and the car in front of me. So, the more boxes, the more distance it's going to be between me and the car in front of me it's going to keep. So, if I set it to 65 and the guy in front of me slows down to 50 and then back up to 70 and then to 65 again, it'll keep that designated distance I set, and, and it'll just slow down, speed back up, and try to keep whatever speed I have it set to, but it, it can adjust, right? Now, if you don't want to use the adaptive style of the cruise control, you can just press and hold this button for a couple seconds, and then you'll see cruise mode selected. Now, it's just a standard cruise control. If I want to turn it back on, press it again, and then I'm back over to adaptive cruise control. So, that's how that works. Now, above, you'll notice I do have paddle shifters. I've got a plus, and I've got a minus over here. So, if I want to, you know, upshift or downshift, I can do that and get, have a little bit more control over my car. Now, over on this stock, I want to point out a couple things. I can set the lights to auto to where they'll, they'll turn on and off for me, and I don't have to mess with that. And then my fog light controls right here if I want to turn them on or turn them off. Now, on the tip of the blinker stock, there's going to be a button over here. There's two things I can do here. So if I turn the blinker on, you're going to see a fire on this camera, and that runs down the right side of the car. So you can see the red line is the end of my car. Red to orange would be a car length, and if you can see that secondary orange line back there, that'd be a secondary car length. Uh, if I was like exiting the highway or something, I want to get a feel for that. And that camera is right on the edge of the mirror, so you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it's right there at the bottom corner. Uh, so that's how that works. So I don't have to hit my right blinker on to turn that on. That's just what the default is. On the tip of the blinker stock, you'll see this button right here. If I press it once, that camera is now on and running. So the cool thing about that is, Let's say I don't need to exit yet, but I know I'm going to coming up. I can turn it on and just see who's sitting around me. Or maybe I heard a motorcycle earlier, and I'm like, I don't know where that dude went. I could turn it on, see if he's sitting back there in my blind spot, so I'm not turning my head, looking away from the road in case the car in front of me hits or brakes, right? So that's what the purpose of this camera is. So that's one of the cameras on the car. While I'm talking about cameras, I'll throw it in reverse so you can see the backup camera too. So backup camera will throw on the minute the car goes in reverse, and it has three different views. So right now you can see this is a wide-angle view, so you can see a lot of who's down my left and right side. You can actually see the edge of the car who's sitting next to me, right? I can jump over to just a standard backup camera, so you can see I'm going to lose. It's going to focus in some, and then the next one. So this is actually aimed straight down. So this is the back of my bumper, 
right? So this is aimed straight down. So if I was backing up to another car or a curb or anything like that, I could start cruising back, which I'll do here a little bit, which actually I'm up against the curb, so I can't back up any further. Let me see if I can pull forward though and show you if I can get up enough to where you can see me back up to that. So let's throw it in reverse again here. Um, so yeah, it's still under my tires. But what I would do is I, like, so if I was going for this line right here, you know, obviously I could keep backing up, keep backing up. Um, and know that this solid line is about two and a half, three feet from my car. So if I'm parallel parking, I'm going to want to use that line. But you can see I have this dotted line, so I'm about six inches from my car. At that point, I could stop and just throw it in park, and I'm good. So that's what the purpose of that is. So that's my two cameras running on this car. So while I'm over here, I'll show you the the, uh, the auto touchscreen now. So I've got buttons down the side, and I've, I've got a volume knob. So this is a little bit different from the previous years. So if you want to reach over for a home button, you don't have to actually touch on the screen and look for home. You can just touch the buttons down the side. So I've got home. I've got navigation, uh, which I'll go to next. My navigation button. So navigation is set up through Garmin, so I can pinch, you know, I can pull, I can move stuff around. So it's not hard to use, right? So it's pretty simple. I'm going to jump back here for just a second. If I want to search, I can either search this way, and I've got a lot of different options as far as different ways to search. Um, or I can use voice command for a lot of this stuff too, and that's where that voice command button comes into play for my navigation. It's also going to come into play for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I'll go over here in a second too. So I won't go through a, a lot of this. You know, you can set up your home address. All you do is enter the address and go from there. So, I mean, a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory. I think you can figure it out. And once you've put in a place, you can save places and you can rename them. So that would be Dave's house, you know, gas station, you know, such and such, or whatever it may be that you visit regularly. So I'm going to jump back out of that. Uh, down the phone, this would be where I'd connect up for Bluetooth options. Uh, it'll prompt me if I've never added a phone to this car. Now, if you've added one phone, but you don't know how to add a secondary phone, what you would do is touch the settings button. From here, I'm going to go to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Under that, there's going to be the Bluetooth and device, uh, Bluetooth device list. So that's right here because I want to add something to that list. So I would touch that, and then bottom, you'll see add a Bluetooth device. From there, I touch that, and then it's going to prompt me, and I can walk through and, and go from there. So that's just how that works. So let's jump back out of that. Now, settings. I want to point out a couple things in the settings area uh, just because it's, it's, it's interesting. Uh, if you need to adjust the clock, it's that simple, guys. If you want to turn the guidelines on the back of camera or turn them on the, the, the hash marks off the uh, side camera, you absolutely can right here. Or if you want to make to where you, when I turn that right blinker on, it doesn't turn that camera on. It's just the button. It's under cameras also, so easy to get to. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi we just went through. That's as far as connecting up phones. Uh, but vehicle is what I want to talk about. So if I go to vehicle, this is where I can get to some of my different settings, like my door lock settings, my window setup, my lighting setup, uh, walkway auto lock features and things like that. So if I go to door and window, I just want to point out a couple quick ones here real quick. So auto door lock, the way this car is set up right now, when you hit 10 miles an hour, it's automatically going to lock your doors. You can change that right here if you want to change it to a different setting. Uh, when you're getting out of the car, when you open your driver's side door, it's then going to unlock the remaining doors of the car. That's what the current setting is. A couple different options you can change that to. So just so you know how some basic settings in your car work. Uh, so keyless lock, answer back, some of these other features uh, you, you can play with and mess with if you want. The very bottom, though, walkway auto lock, this is a really cool feature. What it is is if I turn this on, which I'm going to do it just for the, the sake of it, uh, if I get out of my car with a key fob and I get outside of 10 feet, it'll automatically lock the doors. So if you're the person who gets halfway into the grocery store and goes, Man, I don't know if I locked it. Turn this feature on. You'll, you'll, you'll thank yourself. Um, so it's just nice to know that way I can get out and I don't have to worry about fumbling with my keys or anything of that nature. So that's some general setting stuff for you. Smartphone connection. If I connect up my phone to the USB, which the USB uh, for that would be right down here. And you can see there's actually a wire running through that Honda provides you. And it's going into this console right here so I could connect up my standard USB wire. This is where I could connect up for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. When I do, if I have an I iPhone I connect up, it immediately says Apple CarPlay. I don't have to do anything, download anything, anything of that nature. If you're an Android-based user, you're going to want to download the Android Auto app. Uh, so not hard to find. You can do it on the, the Play Store. Uh, it should be easy enough. When you do that, then you can connect up, and this will say Android Auto. You can select it, and it'll pull up from there. Uh, it's really cool. If you've never looked at it, there's some videos on it. I've even made a couple. It gives you access to uh, your own navigation, whether it be Google Maps, Waze, you know, things like that. Uh, access to Spotify, Pandora, iHeartMedia Radio, um, just some 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 more uh, connectivity through your car. Um, so it's just nice to have uh, uh, other options. So that's what it is. And then you have access to things like Siri uh, and OK Google. So some of the voice command stuff. So I could use the voice command button, press it. Want to hear the beat for Siri? Siri, give me directions to this. Siri, call this person. Siri, send a text to that. Same thing for uh, your Android users, right? Uh, audio. So all of your audio options are right up here under source. So you're going to see I have FM, I've got AM, car comes with three months of Sirius XM as a trial. You do have USBs, so you can plug in like a thumb drive with a bunch of music on it and go that route. Anything with an eye, you can pretty much connect up and play off of. Uh, Bluetooth, if I want to wirelessly stream, whether it be via my phone or whatever the, uh, the, the, the 
object is that I'm streaming from. Uh, I just need to make sure it's compatible. Uh, Pandora compatibility, so I can do that via Bluetooth and it'll show me the stations and I can jump tracks and stations and stuff like that. Uh, or I can do it via uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Uh, so that's kind of the rundown of the audio. Uh, now, jumping down the information screen, there's going to be two things you can see here primarily that most people look at, and that would be one trip info. So if I wanted to see that here versus seeing it over here in the dash is what I have running right now. Uh, and you can see my, you know, how many miles I have on this tank of gas and stuff like that. The other option that's in there is if I just want a real plain setup. So if I'm under info, I can select the uh, screensaver or clock and wallpaper. Uh, I can customize and put my own picture here via the USB. I would just need to load up a, a JPEG or PNG file on one, and then I could pull it up and add it. And to do so, it's not hard. Uh, cl clock and wallpaper type from here. You'll go to next, and you'll just follow the prompts. It's easy to do if you want to mess with it. Uh, Honda Link is set up to where you can access it. Uh, you just set up an account with them, and it does a couple different things. It'll give you recall notices and maintenance reminders, and depending on the trim level of your car, this is going to be a sport touring, so this one might actually have some of those things. And you can look at hondalink.com to make sure whatever trim level you're looking at has some of these options. So whether you want to be able to uh, do the door locks off your phone or whether you want to be able to remote start it from your phone. So you can check every single one of Honda's cars in all the trim levels to see. So if it's something you're interested in having, you can see which level of the car you would need to be on to get that feature. Uh, additionally, Honda Link is set up to where uh, once I've connected up my phone once via Bluetooth, if I was getting in an accident and my airbags deployed, First Honda will try to call me. If I don't answer, they can call 911 for you. 100% free. Uh, it's just something that Honda offers in all of their vehicles. So it, it's kind of nice. It's like an OnStar setup, except there's no subscription base. So just keep that in mind. You have that available to you, too. Uh, so that's kind of a rundown of the touchscreen. Uh, the AC unit down here, or I should say AC and heat, uh, I can press the climate control button, and I can pull it up all on the screen. If I want to adjust stuff from here and do that, I can, absolutely. Uh, if I don't want to mess it from there, I don't have to. I can control my AC uh, controls. So you can see up here I have them synced right now. Uh, so they're running off of that. And then if I want to unsync them, press the unsync button. And now that one's low, that one's higher. Uh, so I'm going to jump back and sync. Uh, I have my fan control speeds right here and then where I want my air to go right here. So you, you can do it a couple different ways. I do have heated seats on this car. So you can see I have three different settings. You've got LEDs to let you know which one you're on. Uh, the next thing I'll show you is the probably the three most commonly asked about uh, buttons in the car. The first is the econ button over here. So if I press that econ button, you're going to see a green leaf pop up there in the corner and in, in, when you initially do it. And what that means is it's just set up to where you'll get better gas mileage if you're using it, but it's a give and take system. So understand that when you use this, you are going to give up some of the acceleration in the car and you're also going to give up a little bit of the AC and heat um, power. So in limiting some things, shutting down some electrical systems in the front end of the car, it's going to give you better gas mileage. How much you're going to ask? Well, that depends on the driver and how you drive. If you're a heavy-footed person who's going to gas hard, you're not going to see as much results as the conservative driver. So just keep that in mind. Now moving over to your parking brake, it's electronic. To use it, I put my foot on the brake. I lift up on the trigger to set it. LED lets me know it's on, and it says brake over there in the far right corner. To release it, I put my foot on the brake, press down. And now it's releasing, you'll see there's no LED. Now brake hold is set up to where if I'm in stop and go traffic and I have this button on, so if I turn it on real quick, you'll see brake hold pop up there in the center, and there's a green button over there. You can see it flashing at me over in the corner. That lets me know it's on. Now you have to have your seatbelt on for this feature to work, but what it's designed for is this. If I'm in drive, the brake hold button is on, my foot is on the brake, I'm still in drive, I can let my foot off the brake, I'm not moving. So when I come to a complete stop in traffic, if it's, you know, I'm waiting through nine cycles of a light because I live in Austin, that's what the traffic is like here. Uh, when I come to a complete stop, I can let my foot off and relax. When it's time to go again, I press the gas, it releases the brake automatically for me, and I move forward the six inches or however far I'm gonna move. So that's what brake hold is, and that's how it works. Keep in mind, if you're gonna use this like through a drive through or something like that, you know, because you're not shifting to park and you're, you know, pulling up the window, you gotta have your seatbelt on. So if you're at the bank and you take your seatbelt off when you're using this function, so if I take my seatbelt off right now, it immediately turns on my parking brake. So you can see parking brake came on, even though the car's still in drive, so that way it doesn't just start rolling forward. So that's what it's set up to do. So just keep that in mind. So there is a precaution. You're not going to, like, roll into somebody in front of you. So I'm going to release the parking brake. Now that's back in park. Um, as far as center console setup, I do have a sliding armrest right here. It is leather covered. Uh, I do have the smaller, shallow cup holders right here. I can slide that back into a, a, a big, huge drink if I want to. And you can see I do have an additional USB down there. Uh, so that's what's going on from that standpoint. Up above me, I do have an auto dimming mirror, so I can it'll, it'll adjust for me automatically. Um, the car does have Honda sensing, which I was going over earlier. Uh, for lane keep assist, if there's a camera in this box that detects the lines on the road, and then when you're using the adaptive cruise control, it uses this camera and a radar down in the grill. Uh, I do have a, a moonroof that I can pop open, so I can send it all the way back. Woo, it's super bright outside. Uh, and then once that's closed, I could open it this way. Oh, a bird did a favor here. And if I want to crack it, I just press straight up on it, and it'll throw a little bit of arrow, right? And then to close it press forward again. 
Uh, so this is the black and ivory interior of the vehicle. So this will give you a good look of it. You can see it has a graphite finish along there in the dash. Uh, so a sporty look to the inside of the vehicle. And you can see I do have some speakers sitting back there in the corners too. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Uh, you can always comment on the YouTube video. Uh, you can call me at 512 443 4300 or you can email me the letter J and then my last name Fuller, F-U-L-L-E-R at HowdyHonda.com. Thank you much.